That's the feeling we've all had. How new shoes would make you glad, but the best time you recall when you wore no shoes at all. Back the day. Hey there, and welcome to another episode of Living Lightly. I'm Dan Jerica. Today I wanted to talk a little bit about my story because I've been making these videos about sustainable practices and the technologies I've implemented here at Dancing Rabbit Eco Village, but I have yet to tell much of my background story and how I ended up here. You might be wondering, how does this guy think he can tell me how to live more sustainably? What makes him think he can have a channel called Hardcore Sustainable? Well, it's a long story and I won't go into all the detail, but I've basically been trying to live as sustainably as possible since I started becoming aware of environmental problems in my late teens, many long years ago. I praise all those people who were deep in the rat race but rejected it far into their adult lives for a more fulfilling, more sustainable path. However, that was not my story. I was raised in middle-class suburbs and saw firsthand and participated in conspicuous consumption through my entire childhood. One of the first awarenesses that shattered my paradigm of the suburban American dream was learning that styrofoam never goes away. It just didn't seem logical in any way that people would create something that could end up in the environment and would never break down naturally. I was pretty naive. From then on, it was an endless awakening to all the fairy tales, to the man behind the curtain of the abundance of the American lifestyle. Despite my lack of exposure to much beyond the consumption-based, advertising-soaked message from the American media, I picked out the things that I connected with and somehow, through all the artificial stuff, built a connection with nature. I loved to watch nature shows on PBS and they brought me some awareness of the threats to wild animals and their habitats. I started gardening at the age of seven because I loved to see plants grow and get the produce of my hard work and knowledge of growing things. I studied environmental science in college and I've worked on a number of organic farms. I've worked in cooperative businesses and lived in cooperative houses for many years. So I know about cooperative alternatives to capitalism, their benefits and their drawbacks. Although I'm no expert, I have a familiarity with and interest in economics and the role it plays in human impact on the planet. Like it or hate it, economics is at its root just the way humans get what we need to survive. Well, that's what it should be, but often it's about getting what we don't need to survive. Over the years, these early interests have expanded and continued into my adult life and led me to living here at Dancing Rabbit Eco Village, where I can fully implement many of the ideas I've embraced over the last 25 years or so. I've been living this more sustainable life off-grid in a tiny house for over nine years now. I built my own house from local and reclaimed materials. I haven't owned a car for that entire time, instead sharing three or four vehicles with from 22 to 60 other people. I've used minimal fossil fuel directly and only in the form of propane for cooking, diesel fuel during the winter for our car co-op, and some for a tractor. I've gotten most of my water from rainwater catchment. I've heated my house almost entirely with waste wood. I've designed and installed off-grid power systems for many houses. I've grown a significant amount of my own food. I chose to move to Dancing Rabbit because, though I wanted to live sustainably, I didn't want to live in a noisy and dirty city, and I didn't want to live isolated in the country far from neighbors and community. I knew that in living here, I would have other like-minded people around to cooperate with in living more sustainably. I could get the benefits of a car, a truck, and a tractor without having to buy one. There are so many ways we cooperate here that people living separately in the country or in a city couldn't do. And one of the most significant reasons I wanted to live here is that I could have access to a lot of land for building and agriculture without having to single-handedly sh shell out money to buy something on my own. At Dancing Rabbit, none of us owns the land, yet we all own it together in a land trust that ensures the land will be kept sustainably in perpetuity. It's this cooperation with others that I think is DR's greatest asset. We're based on a village model but we're much different from other villages and that we we're actively cooperating to get our needs met. Most villages these days are just conglomerations of individuals who happen to be living in the same area, but there's little interaction or cooperation between them. We cooperate to provide daily meals for each other. We cooperate to share bathroom and shower facilities so that each house doesn't have to have its own. We cooperate in providing power for ourselves with our microgrid that combines our house's power systems to provide solar and wind power for most village residents. This greatly reduces the need for batteries and individual components in each house. 
We have our own alternative currency, the ELMS system, through which most economic transactions in the village are made. We have just started a growers co-op to grow food on a larger scale so that we can more efficiently and successfully grow our own food. Many of us also buy organic food in bulk cooperatively to allow ourselves to afford a more sustainable diet. And all of these ways of cooperating are up to the individual's choice. You can choose to be a part of them or you can have your own everything. However, it really makes more sense to cooperate with others if you can. We're also cooperating to create something that's greater than the individuals here separately. If I were out in the middle of nowhere alone, I would be just one person. If I were a family, same thing, just one family. Here I'm a part of something bigger that's actively doing something about climate change, setting an example for others and providing them hope that it can be done. That people can live with much less fossil fuel and still have a fulfilling life. But I don't just want to live my way out in the wilderness where no one can see me, knowing I'm doing my part to change my little corner of the world. I want to teach other people about the potential to create a more sustainable and fulfilling lifestyle. That's why I'm posting these videos and showing others what I'm doing here. To understand why I'm doing things the way I'm doing them, you have to understand the way we live here. Dancing Rabbit Eco Village was formed on this land in 1997, and we have a goal to be a large village eventually. But we're different from other eco villages. Although we have a similar goal of living sustainably, we've taken it a few steps further to make our sustainability more hardcore by having a set of ground rules or overarching covenants that everyone who lives here is required to follow. Our covenants state that Dancing Rabbit members will not use personal motorized vehicles or store them on Dancing Rabbit property. Fossil fuels will not be applied to powering vehicles, space heating and cooling, refrigeration and heating domestic water. All gardening, landscaping, horticulture, silviculture and agriculture must be organic. Waste disposal systems have to reclaim organic and recyclable materials. Lumber used for construction must be either reused, reclaimed, locally harvested, or certified as sustainably harvested. All electricity produced has to be from sustainable sources. Any electricity imported from off-site has to be balanced by exporting enough on-site sustainably generated electricity to offset the imported electricity. So when you hear me talking about not being able to use fossil fuel, that's why. Our land trust dictates in certain specific ways what we can and can't do on or to the land. We're always updating and clarifying our policies to make them more effective, practical, and adapted to new technologies. Since I came here, I've moved one tiny house over here from a neighboring farm and finished it, at first to live in and then to be a rental property. I built a passive solar straw bale house I currently live in. I've established and tended multiple gardens where I grow my own food. I've planted a vineyard with the intention of having a winery sometime in the future if I can actually be successful in growing grapes organically. I tend a hoop house and grow out of season vegetables so that DR members can have more local food for more of the year. I've planted perennial fruit trees and bushes around my yard to provide more local food. My yard is a great example of permaculture in action, as are many other people's yards here. Although cooperation is a great way to reduce cost, it's not my desire to live in poverty and squalor. I want to live richly but sustainably. Living sustainably doesn't mean sacrificing all the good things in life. It actually simplifies things in a lot of ways and puts them more in your control. You come to appreciate the simple pleasures more, and you don't need lots of stuff to make you happy. It does make the occasional luxury that much nicer, though, when you live simply and sustainably. Philosophically, I'm a realist. I believe in science. I don't think there's any supernatural force that's going to swoop down and save us no matter what we do. I believe we control our own fate and have to take responsibility for that. I believe science can give us the understanding of how we're impacting and how we can reduce our impact on the planet. But science is a double-edged sword. Untempered, it's largely responsible for propelling us towards the destruction of our planet and our entire way of life. It's given us the information we've used to endanger our world, but it also holds the key to saving it and to helping us evolve as a species. Understanding the world through evidence-based thinking shows us a universe that's amazing beyond our wildest imagination. Why make up supernatural forces that aren't there if there's scientific evidence for natural forces that actually exist, though they may not do exactly what we'd like them to do? Over the nine years I've been here, I've come to understand a bit of what works here and what doesn't, which technologies might be viable and which might not what the limitations are of living without fossil fuel and getting my basic needs met and in creating a sustainable economy. 
Most Americans have no concept of what it would be like to live without fossil fuel, and they couldn't imagine doing it. In fact, a lot of them don't even know their lifestyle is entirely made possible by a finite resource, something their children might have to do without at some point. I can't tell you how many times we get visitors here who say, it's nice to know you live this way, but I could never do it. We still have the luxury of it being a choice, but it won't be a choice much longer. In just the time since I was born, over half the world's wildlife have disappeared as a result of their habitat being destroyed and taken over by humans. The world population has doubled, growing from 3.5 billion to about 7.4 billion humans, more living at one time on Earth than has lived in the entire history of humanity. And the U.S. population, which consumes more resources per capita than any other large country, has grown by over 120 million people. It's hard for us to see these changes and their true impact. If anything, though resources have dwindled, our society appears much more affluent than it was when I was a kid. Resource consumption per capita in the U.S. has grown dramatically in just 100 years. And with each passing year, we become more dependent on technologies and resources that are not sustainable even into the near future. Living at Dancing Rabbit, you come to realize how deluded mainstream economists' hopes for the global economy are. How serious the need is for everyone to change the way they live drastically. Most economists believe that we can magically continue to grow our economy indefinitely. Yet much of our economic growth is fueled by population growth and by a false abundance of finite resources. The more people, the more consumers, and the more reason to extract resources from the Earth. Our current rate of population growth is totally unsustainable. We have to stop population growth and dramatically reduce consumption, particularly in the world's richest countries if we're to survive. Not just because we're destroying the planet, but because it's deluded to think that our global economy is not approaching a brick wall at high speed. It's unlikely there are practical alternatives to fossil fuel that will sustain the economy and the population growth we've come to expect. The current population growth and rate of consumption can't be maintained without a continually increasing supply of energy. And that's an unlikely scenario, given that fossil fuel is a finite resource and given the limited options with any potential to replace it. We recently did an audit of our consumption habits at DR and found that with the systems we've implemented, we use 10% of the fossil fuel, 14% of the electricity, 19% of the water, and produce 13% of the landfill waste of the average American. The average American would need more than 14 Earths to supply them with resources, but here at DR, we need less than one Earth. And guess what? We only have one Earth. You don't have to wait forever for a corporate-controlled government to implement policies. You can simply change the way you live your life. You can implement these practices where you are to reduce your impact, or you can come join us at DR in creating a model for a more sustainable small village. Well, thanks for watching. I'd like to do some more videos like this, and I think next time I'm going to talk about the economics of living here at Dancing Rabbit. There's a lot of things to consider when you can't use fossil fuel. Uh, most of the businesses that exist in our country uh, rely heavily on highly subsidized fossil fuel and the cheapness uh, and, and abundance of it are sort of uh, false abundance of fossil fuel in our culture. Um, so when you live here at Dancing Rabbit and you're trying to live without fossil fuel, you have a lot of handicaps when you're getting a business started or when you're trying to make money. So it's something that I think about a lot and we get a lot of questions from visitors and I've gotten some questions from viewers. Uh, so I think I'd like to make a video about that. Uh, okay, well, uh, don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't done that yet and uh, share this video and give it a thumbs up if you liked it and until next time A few years ago. I also had sheep in here. There's a variety of sheep called uh, South Down baby doll sheep and this variety of sheep is small enough that uh, They can't reach the vines and so they don't get up and and nibble on the vines but they'll graze the grass and that would be my ideal for mowing in the vineyard here and they would love all of this white clover because there aren't a lot of uh, organic methods of disease control that are sort of like a 